Hello and welcome to The Big Chat, a podcast that champions individuals and businesses at the heart of their communities. Um, Making sure they understand how accountable they need to be in the business, but being positive throughout so that they literally love what they do. I think magazines will always be around. I think there'll always be a market for them. I think advertisers like being on paper. But in another way, it actually gave me that time to really grow and develop and, um, yeah, build it, basically. We, we try to communicate more with clients than most accountants do. The Big Chat. This is all about collaboration and giving people in our towns the chance to have their say, their way. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Big Chat and we are, um, well, we we are very excited. Those of you who listened to Giles and I last week chatting about what we're up to, um, we're going to be visiting a certain pantomime. In fact, I will be visiting some um, certain characters from a pantomime tomorrow, Beauty and the Beast, that's taking place at the EM Forster Theatre. Um, they're pretty much sold out ticket wise. They've got local legend Tom Swift, obviously Wicked Productions. Um, he, he writes the panto. He's in the panto. He's commentator at our soapbox. He's a, you know, does lots and lots of stuff with us. We, we love Tom. And um, we wanted as the big chat and as the soapbox to get behind them and give them some goodie bags. And that's that's really how that started. We wanted to support them when the children go up on stage, as we all love to do, give the children some goodie bags. So we really put a lot of thought into these goodie bags this year. Um, and how we go about that is the first thing we do is we find out who they're supporting. Um, they always support charities in their events. And the EM Forster Theatre is delighted to be working alongside local mental health charity, West Kent Mind. They're raising funds um, to support invaluable services that they provide across the whole of West Kent. And at the heart of West Kent Mind's mission is positively enriching people's lives. And we're thrilled to be working and supporting that. Um, anything that preserves positive mental well-being and our local community we are behind big time on the big chat and the soapbox and all that we do at chatty so we thought what better way to start the day or friday talking to the chief executive of west kent mine stevie rice a bit more about the charity hello stevie hi there how are you doing i'm doing very well how are you I'm really good. I've had an interesting drive in on a frosty morning, but it's all good. You know, uh, I think no better weather really for a pantomime, eh? I mean, exactly. There is no better weather for a pantomime. And I mean, I, I came over, I don't know if it's snowing when I came over and got some goodies from you to go in those bags. But um, so we've really, we've been really well supported because I think you do have a lot of people that support you. Um, I know that TN Card Jess does a lot with you. Obviously, she, we, we, created her first podcast series for her with the, through the big chat um and it's great you know it certainly seems to be a, a, a good known charity but obviously you still need support do you want to tell those that don't know about it a little bit more about what you do and how long you've been going stevie yeah sure yeah. Well, we're definitely um kind of approaching um later years if you like we are next year we celebrate our 60th um, anniversary wow. so quite excited about that can't believe that the organization's been at, around for so long um but i think that's testament to the kind of support that we get from the local community and the fact that we're so needed within the lo- local community so um yeah 60 year anniversary next year so so what we do at West Kent Mind we're we're really an organization that believes strongly that everybody should have the opportunity to get well to stay well and to thrive and that's kind of our strap line really it's what is our mission it's what we're really designed to do um so we work with people um through our social activity groups so we've got a range of social activity groups where people can come and connect with one another talk about their mental health, seek that kind of solace and support, if you like, from other people who have got lived experience of mental health issues mm-hmm. and really just, um, uh, you know, take take them through a, a, a process of, of either ad- adapting, you know, their skills, learning new skills, experiencing different um, opportunities. So we've got photography, we've got arts workshops, we've got craft workshops, we've got a knitting group, we've got photography, um, we have a mindful gardening group. Um, oh. So we've got quite a lot of these kind of um, social activity groups that we call them. Um, and they're really popular and people really get an awful lot of support from, from other 
other people who engage in those groups too, which is fantastic. There is nothing better than having a conversation with somebody else who's going through this, a similar kind of thing to you. And I think we yeah. can all relate to that, you know, really important yeah. to, um, to share experiences. So other things that we do, we run a, an affordable counselling programme. Yeah. So quite often people, you know, who who need that kind of one to one therapeutic support can be quite costly. It's yeah. not always easy to get that kind of um, that that support if you're, you know, um, particularly now with the cost of living crisis, we're all you know, facing, um, you know, some really cha real challenges with um, with our financial situations. Um, and one of the things I would say is that, um, you know, that 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 one to one support is absolutely crucial moving forward for people. You know, people come out of that program having really, um, you know, tackled quite a lot of their own issues, which is fantastic mm -hmm. and, and achieved some really good impact with that. We also have a supported housing program. So people who have got mental health issues who want to come into our supported housing program, we can provide them with a home for you know, two to three years while we work with them to develop a, a personal goal and, and plan for them to move on into independent living. Um, and those two houses that we have are in Seven Oaks, you know, big, nice big houses, beautiful houses. Nothing. Um, so, yeah, there, there's an awful lot of stuff, you know, psychoeducational um, courses that we run. Um, you know, there's there's an awful lot going on in the organisation. As we speak, we have a crisis service um, and, you know, for those people that are in emotional distress, uh, at, it's called the Solace Cafe and that takes place at the Amelia Scott in Tunbridge Wells. So quite a lot of happening um, across the board, really. Um, lots of information on our website about our services, when they run, how you can um, be referred to them, how can you, you can sign up for our groups. So plenty going on. That's brilliant. I mean, that's Solis Cafe. That sounds beautiful. I mean, I just I emceed a little while back at an event for the Amelia Centre, and it's it's a it's a it's a beautiful space. And um, uh, yeah, a good friend and a guest of the big chat, Van Grimes. They do lots of stuff there, and a strong female lead. Lots of different people getting involved now. It seems like we're all collaborating more in the right direction, doesn't it? I feel like people are coming together a lot more than they used to. Since so I don't know how you feel about. Oh, definitely. And I think we have to. Um, I mean, there are so many community spaces out and around, you know, the West Kent area that, you know, potentially, you know, they, these spaces want to open their doors to people, to the local mm. community. I mean, I think those venues are, are, are critical now. We don't we don't have lots of space. You know what mm. we do? We're, we're, we want to support people with mental health problems. We don't have vast, a vast estate to do that in. We rely on the partnerships and the engagement from our local community, um, sharing resources, sharing assets and um, making those spaces available to the community as and when they need them. So it's re that's really important to us. So we're looking for spaces. So if there's anybody out there that thinks, oh, yeah, we'd love West Kent Mine to come and do something on our patch, um, you know, give us a shout, you know, get in touch. And um, there may well be some ways, uh, you know, that we can we can deliver in your area. But, you know, space is always important to us. And those community connections, critical. I, I do yeah. think, you know, you're right when you say, you know, it kind of feels like it's something that we all need to be doing. Um, yeah. There's there's no way on this planet that we will solve all the mental health issues, that, you know, not even in West Kent at the moment. You know, it's it is significant. And we know that over the last you know couple of years, the, the mental health needs in Kent have grown by about 20 percent. So um, so that is significant. So so in order to ensure that we're providing the right support and we're creating impact, We've got to work with people. You know, we've got to work with people with lived experience because we can't mm. solve it on our own. You know, we would never have the resource to do that. And so one of our key kind of cornerstones to our strategy, if you like, is about going out and ensuring that the community has the kind of tools and the resilience, you know, the means to support itself, you know. And, and, and you know, so if you're a member of a family, if you're a friend, if you're a work colleague, if you're somebody at school, you know, that you have the tools to be able to support somebody else when, they, when they're having, um, you know, problems with their mental health. And let's face it, you know, we'll probably all at some stage have, have some of those problems. Yeah, and I think you're entirely right when you speak there. I mean, I... I personally and, and you know I've suffered on and off with mental health my whole life I mean I had a quite a distressing upbringing that some people know about some people don't and I probably suffer from PTSD and all sorts of things that were unresolved because I'm a 47 year old woman and back then it was dealt with very differently to you know now mental health is becoming much more talked about my son who's 13 talks about mental health my daughter who's 11 talks about you know this is she, I mean obviously I say be careful with your words and things like that but 
um, it's the, there's a whole different variety of problems for them with social media because they can be become under attack, attack by social media, you know. But then there's also a lot of great ways we can use technology to connect, as we did through COVID, like we're doing now. Um, it's using these devices and these these areas for for the right messaging in the right way. I think a key um, because when you do talk about your problems and you normally you. you it, it doesn't necessarily solve them or make them go away, but and, and certainly it depends on the depth and the and the, you know the the diagnosis of the mental health issue. But actually, you you it, it almost dilutes what the problem is by talking to someone else or by knowing that someone else is going through what you're going through. Or if someone see you know I'm quite open about the fact that I've had mental health problems, and people probably m- may well assume by my happy jolly go lucky you know bouncing around but I'm just like Tigger and life is wonderful well no actually I'm a bit more like Eeyore some days do you know what I mean and some days I just want to stay under the covers and um it takes a Winnie the Pooh or a piglet to come and get me out of it and I think that's that's the truth for all of us and certainly with men as well I mean um Giles Paley Phillips who's obviously our podcast producer he's a great advocate of, of helping with mental health and I have friends like Matt from Fine Grind who do lots and lots to help with men because again men they're not they, they, they we seem to be better at talking about it women men are starting to get better it's starting to become more acceptable but it is there is still this kind of stigma of oh you know push it down push it down and as we know that's how it gets worse that's where we then get into a real mess with mental health if we don't talk about it and we don't share our experiences or or we don't accept help. I think that's the thing. And what you guys are providing is amazing because the more people that know about that, the more people realise that this is something that that it's just like going to a gym you need to you know the the thoughts that we have are not they're not us they're thoughts you know and they create feelings that we can deal with in the right capacity and just the same as if you want to go to you know lose some weight and you go to the gym and exercise or if you want to build some muscles it's it, it, it can be that practical in my opinion but without you know amazing charities like yourselves there is it's very hard to get support and families as well the families of these people that are affected they don't know what to do I mean I know my family did uh, I'm sure they would say at times they haven't known what to do with me when I'm desperately depressed because if I've been depressed I just don't want to talk to anyone I mean that's Mm. the problem when you're depressed you just don't want to talk for me personally it's when I'm quiet you need to worry about yeah that's that's so true it's so true and I I I mean it's when you think about it and and thank you for sharing your story there because that's if that's so powerful for people to hear that actually you know mental health we all have mental health and and it does fluctuate you know it can go up and can go down sometimes we might feel stressed we might start that might turn into anxiety you know we might feel depressed you know we I mean during the COVID and during the pandemic it was really you you know we we had saw this huge increase in the um, number of uh, people who were experiencing poor mental health yeah and you know you could probably look at that and go oh my god you know what's happening you know to society what's happening to our community but actually it was a very natural um Mm. response and probably a very normal response to to a very unnatural and extraordinary situation that we were all going through so Mm. that's why it's nothing to be ashamed of it's a very response in lots of ways and I think what we saw with um, COVID we saw lots of um, I suppose our mental health was impacted so much because of social issues because we weren't able Mm. to get that support from friends and family and our support networks were kind of cut off and you know for all those reasons we really um, we really felt quite anxious and of course the uncertainty and the restrictions and all Mm. of that now what we're seeing is that the cost of living crisis is driving poor mental health and we know that some of those drivers to, to poor mental health are things like poor housing, unemployment, the loss of our jobs, potentially, you know, the, the, you know, the loss of our um, relationships, you know, bereavement, um, you know, heating, you know, all of that stuff, which, you know, we know um, is impacted by COVID and the cost of living is mm-hmm. really exacerbating the situation. So, I mean, now more than ever. I mean, I, I, it's extraordinary to think that we've been going for 60 years, but in some respects, as you said earlier, we haven't really talked about mental health in the same way that we're talking about it now. Um, yeah. That's only really happened in probably, would you agree, the last five five years or so? Um, totally. I mean, I think, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's a statement in itself that you've been going for 60 years because that's like, 
it 60 years ago it was a whole different world I mean generationally certainly the generation above me I would say a less um certainly the male generation seem less talkative about their problems it seems to be changing down the generations I'm I'm sort of you know in the 40 to 50 bracket put it um and it's, I was always very interested. I've always been quite philosophical. So I've always been interested in mental health. I was a yoga teacher for a long time and um, I trained in meditation. So I'm an NLP coach. So I've always been interested in the mind and how it works. And so for me, um, and just communications with what I do, it, it makes sense. You know, it makes sense to communicate with people. But yeah, it, it, your thoughts can drive you mad. They literally, if you don't go, if you don't deal with it, it can drive you to insanity and it can drive you to the edge. And I just feel awful for people that don't feel like they've got anywhere they can reach out to because there are places that support. Um, that, and the housing thing's brilliant because, I mean, my God, this snow, you know, people mo moaning about the snow in their cars and look, okay, yeah, it's a problem. I mean, I've got a four by four so I could get out of the snow and I went and helped someone get out of the snow yesterday because I wanted to and they couldn't get out. But there's people that are out there that are freezing cold that literally haven't got homes. I mean, it's just, there, there is so many things and ways that we can help. And you're, like you say, you're offering solutions. And that's why people need to get behind causes like yours and build more awareness on them. Um, just the same as the NHS is a beast in its own. All, all these charities need to be having more exposure. They really do. It's vital. Yeah, and I guess, you know, one of the interesting things that you're saying there is is we need that support from our local community. I mean, we, we've been absolutely privileged that our local community will fundraise for us. So many people go out and do, um, you know, run marathons for us or yeah. do ridiculously long bike rides or, you know, go on a crazy hair day for school or, you know, they do cake sales and they do magnificent and wonderful and generous and giving things. Mm. But things are difficult for folk now because people aren't dipping into their pocket as much. And if, yeah. they're, if they're not dipping into their pocket now, because, you know, from, from no fault of their own, because they, they're facing that cost of living crisis themselves, everybody's, Absolutely. you know, pennies have got to go a whole lot further. That does mean that the knock-on effect on charities like West Kent Mind is immense. And we're not yeah. the only ones, but we are really beginning to feel the pinch because um, we're not we're not seeing that level of giving that we once did. And, and that's going to have a real impact on the organisation moving forward um, because, the charity sector, I fear, is going to be so hard hit by this cost of living crisis. We're already seeing it, but it's going to get a whole lot worse. And, um, and it's painful, yeah, I'm worried about it. Is, it is, and you're, you're right. I mean, even uh, as an employee uh, myself, <clears throat> I've had to make cutbacks. I've had I've had impacts on my business through my, so no fault of, of our own as a company that have affected my company now that i tell you the mental anxiety that goes around that when you've got to make cutbacks even that as an employer you know it's just horrible because you're having to make cutbacks because you've got to protect your family but you're affecting other people there are so many layers to so many different things and then you've got the people that you're like you say then get the financial impact i mean what it's like dominoes one thing knocks another thing over and it has an impact and it's it is very very sad because it is going to get worse it is going to get worse and it's yeah like you say in covid i mean that was why certainly for the soapbox race we opened up the soapbox race to raise for individual charities rather than just two designated each year because you guys there's lots of charities that need to raise awareness and raise funds for so mm -hmm. i definitely hope we can try and get you in a cart next year stevie because i would love to get <laughs> yeah. you in a those cards and get people behind you come on let's get jess and tn card and all those guys racing for uh, west kent mind and raising money for you because again you don't without these things that are going on like you say these fundraisers you're you guys are busy enough as it is you're there helping people you're on the you're you're on the shop floor as it were you're dealing with the public and you're managing it and that in itself is a beast i mean and you're also picking up a lot of other people's anxiety and that's a that's a hard job that's a hard job i've i've been a coach for a long time and you have to be a certain in a certain mental state yourself to be able to actually take that on. So it's no yeah. easy task for you or your team either. It's you have to have incredibly resilience, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, our team are absolutely exemplary. I mean, I'm so proud of them and I'm so privileged that I get to work with this bunch of people because they are incredibly um, compassionate caring, mm. talented, insightful, wise, you know, and uh, so full of knowledge about mental health. Um 
but yeah, they're working really hard at the moment. It's it's a tough gig and, and they're working extraordinarily hard and, you know, in tough, tough, you know, situations, because, of course, as we all know, because the mental health needs, you know, in our community have increased, that means that we're facing more demands of our services, um, which is challenging, which is really challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're so grateful to, you know, the Ian, Ian Forster, EF Forster um, Theatre for, for doing um, yes, and, and supporting us, which has been absolutely phenomenal. I mean, we're so grateful to them for, for showing that level of support within their community, because uh, without that, you know, and without organisations um, providing that kind of support, I think we would be in a very different position. You know, I, I just think it's so critical and so crucial now that um, places like the Ian Forster Theatre that are providing those kind of joyous moments that lift everybody's spirits. What they're not doing is forgetting that there are people out there, out there for whom, you know, they're, they're going through really tough times. So I want to pass, pass my personal thanks on to them, to the team. Uh, you know, and, I tell you, and I tell you what, there is nothing. I mean, I, I like most of last week, I'm not going to lie. I spent with a good, good colleague of mine, Pascal Tesha, stuffing 90 bags. I came in and saw your lovely team. Uh, 90 pantomime bags with all sorts of goodies. I had sticky monkeys involved, children's salon. You put stuff in there. I had the strong female lead, Miss Brown Sugar. We put some things in there. I even did my own bare hands and Pascal's little sweetie big chat bags, like pick and mix bags. I mean, we got we got offered some support from some books, um, an amazing author who I'm going to connect you with after this, Stevie, you know, that I mentioned. It, it's the things that come out of this are so positive. And I physically do those bags myself. I don't, you know, I did them all myself. 90 doesn't sound like that many. It is a lot. It takes a long time. But when you take them and you drop them off and I see Tom Swift's face and he's I'm delivering at the backstage door and I know that they're going to go to a good cause and it's it's going to bring some joy. That also, to me, is the gift of, of, of giving is that you get that back in abundance. You know, if you if you give to help, you, you get back this glorious glow. It's like when I was a yoga teacher, I loved it because to see someone come in sad and leave happier or even just with a smile or even with a different perspective. You're making a difference, and that difference could have an impact on so many other things and people and our children, ultimately. Um, that I think it's just, I think it's phenomenal what you guys do. So we we will definitely be doing more with you. We're going to be dedicating January and February to looking at mental health um, charities, organisations, resources um, in our big chat episodes, because this is a t- tough time of year for families. It's, mm-hmm. it's a joyous time of year, but it's also it can be one of the hardest times of year, as we know, um, for many reasons. And like you said, with the current financial crisis as well, you know, kids don't understand it. Why am I not getting as many presents this year? They, they just don't, they don't understand it. Hopefully they understand it. We can explain it with kindness. But even that as a parent can give you anxiety. <laughs> you, know, you can't, I mean, I know that's a minor, minor issue, but you know what I mean? It's just, you know, or not being able to afford the Christmas dinners that you sometimes had in the past or all these, all these areas of, of things. So and you're so right, because I think what it is, is it's that, you know, it's that personal experience. One of the things I was blown away by when, um, when we came out of COVID was listening to people's stories in and around how COVID impacted them mentally or practically. And there were things that you wouldn't even begin to understand because you live in your own, you you live in your own world. Yeah, Yeah. completely. And so to hear the perspective from other people, I mean, I'm I'm not a mother myself, but I was, I was talking to to mums that were saying that they, you know, their babies hadn't had that opportunity to socialise with other babies when they were born. And Mm -hmm. that really impacted the beginnings of their development. And of course, nothing, I I would never have thought about that. But Mm -hmm. but they also didn't, weren't able to have those, you know, those social engagements at a very, very early age. Um, You know, kids didn't have that kind of social connection and their, their mental health was impacted. There were so many stories that I think, you know, you, it's only when talking to people and I love talking to people I love hearing people's stories I love hearing what has happened to people how people you know what people had to do to survive what people have had to you know bring to the fore how they've drawn on their strength what strength um so I love listening to people's stories and I think that when you speak I think it's absolutely about those that you know you can weave together a whole load of different kind of moments which build up to 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 how you're feeling emotionally mentally 
And whether that's about, oh, my God, I can't give the kids enough presents this year, you know, presents that they were used to, or we're not going to be able to go to, you know, such and such because it's so expensive or whatever it might be, that can build a whole pattern and, and a kind of mosaic of, of, um, of anxiety. Yeah. And, you know, and that's very personal and pertinent to an individual. And it's something that we can't you know you can't replicate but it's it's trying to understand that everybody's got um stuff that they're dealing with and you know what it's only when we actually have those conversations and it's okay and it's great to have those conversations that we actually begin to understand what you know what's going on for people because when you understand what's going on for people you, then you're in a position to say what can I do what would be what would be useful for me to do with you for you say to you right now and that's that's when it gets exciting you know and, you know, and the thing is, these are important questions because, I, I mean, I can remember a long time ago when, uh, well, it wasn't that long ago, it was last year when I was really, I was very, very, very struggling very badly with mental health at the end of last year. It was very, very depressed. It was probably the worst I think I've ever been. In the last five years, I've been on, on quite, a, a, <laughs> quite a journey, I'd say. But I got to a point where I remember my sister sitting me down and saying, let's do some things that make you happy. What makes you happy? Now, you would think looking at me that I'm a happy person, right? I couldn't think of a single thing that made me happy. That's how sad it's going. And, it, you know, and it, it, it's, it, it's so lonely when people feel that way that sometimes they, they need that, you know, even, even if it's someone putting on some music or giving them a cup of tea or going for a walk or, like you say, social, socialising or just snapping them out of that moment so that they're just present today um yeah. we you know i shared yesterday anxiety is worrying about the future and depression is worrying about the, is thinking about the past and i think the more present we can be in in each and every day and the more we can do for each other in each and every day then yeah. the more yeah. work we can do and i think the panto is great because it's a really positive fun family event they, they make their tickets as affordable as they can for the family but it's also highlighting a great charity that is vital because these children now, like you say, not just babies, these kids that have gone through this COVID crisis, they're now, <laughs> uh, we have great relationships with schools and they are really struggling. There's, their children are struggling. The teachers are struggling. It's, it, you know, we'll be exploring it more in the episodes in the, uh, the year because it's impacting, like you say, it's like a mosaic. I like that comparison. It really does where does it stop you know where does it start where does it stop it can go out in all different directions can't it mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and and you know just listening to your story and, and you know that, that that conversation that that you had you know around you know sometimes you know our loved ones just want to fix us they want to make things better for yeah. us they just want it to go away and it's very hard, I think, for some people to know, to have that conversation because they don't know how to fix it or yeah. they don't know what to say. Or what if I say something that makes it worse? Mm. Um, and so people just generally might not say anything at all. But I think, you know, that whole thing about talking is kind of crucial because even if you just say, it's, it, you know, I don't know what to say, but you know what, I'm here. I'm here with you. It helps. It's it really helps. Yeah, you don't have to fix it. And, and sometimes, I mean, and, and, and in terms of the journey you've been on, it, you know, nobody can fix it. It doesn't. No. It's not fixable like that. It doesn't quite work like that. You know. So I'd, uh, it's I've just had to do a lot of yeah, showing a lot people of work. around you. Yeah, I've, I mean, I personally, I've had to do a lot of work on myself because the only the only person you can fix is yourself. You can't. You know, you can get help. You can get lots of help. But literally, the only person that can do it for yourself is you. We have no control over others. We only have control over ourselves. And that is a, and it's, that's hard when you have to sort of face the mirror and you have to look at things like that. And it's, it is the support of others that get you through it because I am blessed that I have a beautiful family that love me and, and look after me and a really supportive partner and ex partner. And my children are patient with me, put it that way. Um, but they've probably seen their mum cry more times than I'd like. And, um, you know, I'm I'm personally making changes to my life to make it less pressurized because it, it's not it's life's not it's we're not on this planet I think to be stressed out and 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 tortured and in turmoil. You know, there's um it it, it can it can get too much. So anything that we can do to get behind causes like this, we will do. And we you and I will certainly be talking more. And it would be lovely to get you into the studio and have a proper I think you and I could probably talk for a long time Stevie <laughs> I have no doubt about that it sounds like we've got some stories to share 
<laughs> so maybe we could do that in the new year. Maybe we could get you guys in and actually, um, you know, really have a really ha- ha- dig in deep and have a proper proper chat um, and, and and really sort of go into some detail about that. And I'm cer- certainly working on some other charity projects next year that I think could be great to work with you on. But uh, from the big chat, we're delighted to be supporting you as a charity through the Panto. And, and that was one of the reasons we wanted to support Tom as well. So it's just brilliant what you do. And I think, you know, just just well done you and just just give me a shout if you need anything you know if there's anything I can do if anyone needs a four by four I keep saying I said to Polly at Pickering yesterday I was like look if anyone needs a lift in the four by four I have a four by four we might we might need that <laughs> yeah like just call me up you know it's worth an ask isn't it it's always all it takes is, is our is the courage to ask someone for help if you can do that Absolutely. you can do that yeah. one thing then there are people out there that want to help you and you guys are definitely top of that list so thank you for all that you do for for all those people and it's been wonderful to talk to you Stephanie. you know you're a- thank you and thank you so much for the support thank you for, for what you've done here which has been welcome. fantastic and um you're yeah welcome. look forward to speaking with you in the new year and you're gonna speak to me in the new year i'm gonna be hooking you up with all kinds of things now you that's it i'm like i'm like this little bug, bug. once i get in you can't get rid of me you know so like it's that. um but I'm a glow bug, put it that way. So it's not too bad. So um, lovely to speak to you. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to us today. And go and do what you're good at now. I've taken up more than enough of your time. And have, have a beautiful Christmas, whatever you're doing, Stevie. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll be cheering you on at the Panto. Um, I'm, I'm going, I think I'm going to talk to Beauty and the Beast tomorrow. So that should be interesting. What's not to love? I mean, sounds like a great job, eh? <laughs> Just check out, Enjoy. yeah. Do, we're, 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 this this we're, this will be coming out on audio, um, Friday and um, which will be today when this is released and next Friday, yeah. Just check it out. We'll uh, we'll be we'll be giving you a personal shout out, but we'll be talking to literally face to face to the characters on on um on the Panto set, which is quite good fun. We did Carlsmas last year. Love Carlsmas, but I like to do something different every year. So, um, and you obviously you've got TN card at Carlsmas this year as well. So you've got support there too. So get to Carlsmas as well, people. Get to Carlsmas and the pantomime and support West Kent Mind. That's my final blurt for today. <laughs> Anything else you want to share, Stevie, before we sign off today? Oh, thank you. I mean, if you want any support, I think, you know, the, the most important thing, we're online, www.westkentmind.org.uk. That's where you can get all the information about our activity programmes, our counselling, our supported housing, our Solace Cafe, um, all the information's on the website. Um, just, yeah, check it out and um, and hopefully we'll hear from those that need it soon. Brilliant. Well, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure, Stevie. You're a, you're a fierce fierce chief exec i like it i like it a lot so um, i try not to be <laughs> no i mean fierce is in powerful good you know and like energetic and passionate that's what i mean fierce is a fierce is a positive word in my world so um yeah i like it you know you've got to, you've got to have a lot of strength and determination and sometimes those of us that go through the most pain can then give back and that's a nice thing to do so i think totally, totally. There's a, everyone's got their own story right so um yeah, yeah. we'll talk more <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> Take Lovely care. to see you. You have a wonderful day. Stay warm. <laughs>